have a big bearing <coughs> on, the, on all of the economic uh, points that you've just made. Yeah. I'd, I'd make a comment. There's no question that China and India will be much bigger players like they were 150 years ago. And we'll be very important, though. We'll be extremely important. We'll still be a world power 50 years from now. Then they, they may be up to us. If, if China keeps growing at 8 to 10 percent and we're growing at 1 to 2 percent, they'll pass us in 45. I mean, in 2045. But that's not going to deter us from being a great power. We have, we have these fantastic minds, this great secondary education. Now, we've got to make changes. Uh, after 9-11, we threw out people. We, we capped H-1B visas. So we educate the best and brightest in Boston, for example, in all these great schools. And then we send them home. Well, we'll change that. We'll modify that. And we'll keep more and more immigrants who can build more and more bright things for us. And um, so I don't have any doubt that we will be. I would not want to be in Europe. I would not want to be in Europe 25 years from now. Population steadily going down below the reproduction rate, getting older, enormous social system, crippling them. You're seeing that they can't get out of this mess now. They're going to have enormous problems unless they start to grow. And I don't know how. They're going to be, unless they start making babies fast and break the rules somehow, uh, they're, they're not going to have a population that's going to, be old, going to be at the right age to build great things. So Europe will decline without question, in my view. China and India will grow, will grow, and, and be a, a, a third power with them. That would be a view. Last question. Uh, this question's for Jack. Uh, if you look around at some of the companies like AIG, uh, you know, General Motors, some of the companies that are struggling to stay alive today, if you had to plug, or if you could plug yourself in as CEO five years ago, what philosophical things would you be doing differently so that these companies were in a different spot today? Well, AIG, <clears throat> I'm not qualified to even comment about. Uh, it's a very complex international company. I probably would have made more decisions that wouldn't have been any better than the ones that they made there. But if you look at GM, that's not been a five-year problem. That's been a 25-year problem. Not building the cars that consumers wanted, ignoring foreign competition. Anybody that ignored foreign competition, whether you were a tannery in Peabody, Mass, or whether you were an automotive company in Detroit and you ignored global forces and consumer tastes, you were dead. So any CEO any time that got into those companies that was willing to break the glass and take it on and get them outside of Detroit in their views would have been successful in doing that because they had a great infrastructure and a dominant market share. Don't forget, GM has lost 15 points a share in 15 years, a point a year, and nothing changed. You can blame a board, you can blame an environment, you can blame a lot of things. GM could have been fixed by half the people in this room who decided that they wanted to look at the outside world, face foreign competition, and meet consumer tastes. Susie Welch, last word. On, on, on GM? On anything. <laughs> <laughs> what he says. You know, I was thinking about, as Jack was speaking, I was actually thinking, like, where's the overlap in what we've said? I think that we are, you know, our, our, our politics overlap, but I think we are both saying the same thing, which is um, about our, our optimism is based on the fact that we think that America is great and that we also believe that people have the power to change the situation we're in. Because if you if you don't visualize yourself or actualize yourself as a victim and you see yourself as an actor in your life, the proactive person in your life, and you create your own life with a sense of deliberateness and optimism, then we'll all get through this. And we'll all, you know, even, whether it's decision by decision or if it's business by business, we will get through this with a sense of ownership of the problem and the solution. Jack and Susie Wells, thanks very much. Thanks a lot.